Hey, what's going on you guys and welcome to another Emblem Roy Review channel. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about Marvel's Spider-Man made by Insomniac. So today's review, I'm going to be going a little bit about the game and as well as talking about my top five moments. So if you guys haven't played the game, just a heads up, there are spoils in here. So to start things off, you guys, Spider-Man was actually brought by Insomniac. Now, if you guys don't know, Insomniac is known for making a pretty big series for PlayStation slash Sony, which is the Ratchet and Clank, which is also one of my favorite series playing for the PlayStation. Um, so when I found out that they were actually building this game and making it and designing and everything, I was very happy because of the simple fact they were taking on an amazing challenge. Spider-Man is one of my favorite Marvel characters. And, you know, the games has always been a hit and miss with me. My last favorite game that I actually played was Spider-Man 2 for the GameCube. And that's also one of my top GameCube games because it was just an amazing game. The open world, being able to do the small missions as well as playing the big mission, you know, and all the small details. That was that was an awesome job. And Insomniac really did a great job on here. So before I go more into depth with the review, I'm going to start things off with my top five moments. Um, just remember, you guys, these are my top five moments. Um, there are just things that really blew me away or, you know, that are leading up to possibly a Spider-Man 2 game or even DLC coming down later down the road. Um, so, yeah, to start things off, number five, you guys, is going to be the opening, the opening cinematic. Um, I believe, you know, the very first 20 minutes of a game really defines on how it's going to be, um, whether I'm going to be really interested in it and being able to play it and continue on going through it. Now, does that apply for all games? No, there have been games that I've played that, you know, I have to play at least five to 10 hours into it before it gets really good. But that's me really having to push through it and knowing that, hey, this game has potential and I really want to play it. But Spider-Man did not need to do that. The first opening cinematic, you know, jumping in from starting as Peter Parker, going through his day-to-day -day life, getting that call from Yuri and saying, hey, we're taking Wilson Fisk into custody. And Peter being the awesome person he is, is like, hey, I got a bad feeling. I need to go and help. And he instantly jumps out through the window, starts web slinging through New York. And you go from the transition from the cinematic to playing the game. It was so beautiful that I just, it gave me goosebumps because I was so excited that I was actually just jumping jumping into the game right after a cinematic movie. Um, so going for number four, you guys, is actually going to be all the costumes. I, 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 you know, I love different decal and I love different availabilities for the game, uh, especially when it comes to costumes, like for Batman or anything like that. You know, it gives us that variance. It gives us the appreciation. Hey, there are other spider universes. There's different versions of Spider-Man, whether it's from 1930s all the way to 2099. So to be able to integrate all those different costumes and abilities in there was really amazing. Playing through, you know, when they, when I finally got the Iron Spider uh, that came out for the Infinity War movie, I got goosebumps because of the simple fact I loved the design. It was awesome. It was great. As well as, you know, being able to get the original Spider-Man costume all the way to 2099, as well as Scarlet Spider, who's one of my favorite alternate universe Spider-Man. Um, yeah, so then going into number three. So just a heads up, you guys, three, two, and one all really tie in together because of the simple fact I'm really hoping Insomniac does make either a number two and base it off this or go for a big DLC that makes that cleans into it and makes it an amazing game further on. Um, number three is introducing Miles Morales. Now, if you guys don't know, Miles is actually a different version of Spider-Man. He's actually the new Spider-Man that took over when Peter Parker died. Um, there's a bunch of different uh, versions of how Peter Parker died. Um, one is just from old age. Second is, you know, Dr. Octopus takes over his body and so on and so forth. If you guys haven't read the comics, check those out. It's just very heart-wrenching. So, yeah. Miles takes over for P uh, Peter Parker as Spider-Man, um, but in this game, he actually just, you know, you meet Miles before he gets his powers. You're introduced who he is, why he's in here, and, you know, experiencing the loss that he goes through through this game, as well as having Peter always be there for him right off the bat, just trying to push him through through life and get him through it because he went through the same thing when he lost his Uncle Ben. Um, and then when Miles finally got his powers, I got super excited, which is leading up to number two of uh, my top five moments. Um, 
and that's going to be when Aunt May died. Now, I'm not saying that's my favorite one because Aunt May died because I didn't like her or anything. Aunt May is such a huge part of Peter Parker's life. She is basically his mom. She raised him with uh, his Uncle Ben, and as soon as his Uncle Ben died, you know, he went through a tough moment. That's really where he got his retrospect of being a superhero. And the reason why I, lo I love the fact that Aunt May died was because of the simple fact, you know, there's a couple things. One, the way she died, she just died beautifully. You know, she, she was in so much pain, but she was able to see her nephew, a.k.a. son, because, let's face it, she was his mom. She got to see him in his Spider-Man costume. She knew that he was Spider-Man. She picked it up, and she just wanted to see his face and see, the, see one of the most important people in his life, and her life, before she passed away. Um, that was just amazing, and Sonic did an amazing job. I, as soon as she, I knew she was dying, I was so pissed off. Even my girlfriend was like, wow, you're taking this way too serious. And it was just, it, I almost cried, you guys. That was That's how big it was. It was so emotional, and it just got me right in the heart because Peter, you know, he is one of my favorite Marvel characters because he goes through so much pain and so much loss, but he also goes through, goes through so much love. And, you know, he's, he's in me, he's a comparison of Batman. Both great superheroes, two of my top, uh, both are my top. So, yeah, and then... You know, there is a variation in the comic books and also in the TV series where Peter Parker actually loses Aunt May and he just goes ballistics and he actually eventually fuses with the Carnage symbiote and he becomes Spider Carnage, who was an amazing, uh, you know, Carnage variant as well as like the Venoms or anything like that. If you guys read in the comics or watch the TV series. But yeah, you know, that I'm I'm really hoping Insomniac is like, hey, you know, we, we left Peter in this very dark space. You know, yeah, it had a happy ending, but he still has his Aunt May gone. So I'm hoping they lead up to Miles taking over the mantle of Spider-Man and going from, you know, just this kid and being Spider-Man trying to save Peter who becomes Spider-Carnage. I'm really hoping they go with that for either a DLC expansion pack or just a, a whole new game for itself. And the reason why I lead up to that, you guys, and I'm talking about the symbiotes, is because my number one moment was at the very end, the secret ending, once you beat the game, uh, it is actually showing Norman Osborn in his playpen uh, bachelor pad, and he has his lab in the back, and you actually see Harry, who, you know, in the story is sick, and he's gone. He's not. He's nowhere to be found. He's just, he disappeared. He went on vacation, and you later found out Harry was actually sick and dying from a disease that his mom gave him. Through a genetic, uh, through just genetics and everything, but you see Harry in a tube of green ooh, and you actually see the venom uh, symbiote attached to him, and it's actually saving his life at the moment. And that's you know that's when I got really big goosebumps because of the simple fact: hey, we're getting the symbiotes, we're getting venom. If they're gonna bring us venom, who is one of my favorite villains in Spider-Man. You know, they got to be bring Carnage, and that's where, you know, Aunt May died, and I tied it together. I was like, okay, they need to do this. This would make an amazing game or make an amazing title, you know, for a DLC. It's, you know, Spider -Man, Peter Parker becomes Spider uh, Carnage, and, you know, with them introducing the Venom symbiote, you know, that's going to be taking a whole DLC or a whole game to itself, but then they can introduce Carnage. So, yeah, this... Insomniac blew, blew me out of the way, you guys. It just blew me out of the water from the very beginning to the very end. It just, it, it gave me a bunch of mixed emotions. So, you know, those were my top five. And as well as, you know, kind of a mixed review into it because of the simple fact this, this right here is now my favorite Spider-Man game. And it's also one of my top uh, PlayStation 4 games. I can replay this and can keep on experiencing it. And it's such an amazing title, you guys. So I do recommend picking it up. Now, going into more depth of the review, there are a couple things I wanted to give you guys a heads up. You know, when it comes to the battle sequence and everything like that, they did they did an amazing job. You go straight either to being a street brawler Spider-Man, you can just jump in the action, beat the uh, beat the crap out of anyone, or you know any of the bad guys or anything like that, or you can be a stealth spider and be able to take them out secretly and you know be kind of like that assassin kind of Spider-Man, which were both great features into it. And, you know, it's just, it was an amazing job they did on that for the battle sequence. It's, you know, the moves, the way you attack, the way you dodge, the way you can actually mix your spider powers with just your regular fighting moves or anything like that. It transitioned to the fighting sequence 
beautifully as well as you know when it came to boss battles you know you have to use specific sequences and keep eyes out for it and go from there also going in for the open world you know open world for a spider-man game is really amazing because of the simple fact you know spider-man's different from the rest of the marvel hero heroes there he's not out there to save the entire world he's there to save the neighborhood he is the friendly neighborhood spider-man so be able to go to certain parts of new york like hell's kitchen uptown and stuff like that it was great it was amazing i love being able to just explore and travel not having to just go from one main story to the other without having to be able to explore or do anything so to be able to do that that was really awesome and the graphics for it was just amazing the details on the buildings the parks the water everything it was just it was amazing now going into a little bit more also in the review one of my things that i do have to complain about it so yes this is not the perfect game Every game is not perfect. There is a very few out there that I believe are perfect straight off the bat. Um, you know, this the storyline was just, I don't know, part of me just felt like it was just too easy. Um, I even changed the difficulty on the game a couple times just because I was having, I was flying through and I was having so much fun with it, but I was just, I was flying through and I felt like I was rushing the game or anything like that. So that was one of my downsides for the game. It's just, it just felt too easy for me. Um, not enough challenges. But, you know, they went ahead and added, instead of, you know, it being challenging for the main mission, they made it challenging for the open world exploration, doing a bunch of side quests and everything like that. So they counteract, but it would be an amazing job if they can go with the next title, you know, make the open world super challenging and make the main mission super challenging as well. You know, adding something i don't know it's just one of those things it felt like it was missing something in the main story for you know the difficulty of the missions or anything like that there were a couple times that i thought it was like cringing or anything like that but the main bosses um some of the missions it just it didn't i had more hard time playing the side missions and stuff like that i was getting more frustrated with that than i was with the main story so one thing just you know in Simonac, make the bosses a little bit harder eliminate the action button sequence you know oh just press one button then you dodge and then you attack the people attack the person or anything like that so it that's one thing i would like to be having change from there but you know as for going for the boss battles you guys they introduced a lot of characters a lot of the comic book main sinister six ones villains you know we got dr octopus electro shocker vulture rhino um Mr. Lake, Mr. Negative, who is actually newer to the version or anything like that in the comics. So they added a lot of great known characters. Um, what I'm hoping for in the DLCs that are coming, uh, I think we got one coming out in like a week or so. I would like to see new villains, you know, bring us a, a DLC for fighting Kingpin again. Bring us one for fighting Tombstone in a bigger, bigger battle. Mysterio, you know, you have a lot of great villains in the Spider Universe. I want to see all of them. I want to see all the Spider Man villains coming into this game, and you have to fight different ones and make it challenging. So, yeah, I mean, out of all, all in all, though, for the game, you guys, I give it 9 out of 10. The only thing that's not making it perfect is the simple fact the main stories to me just felt way too easy and felt way too rushed. I was just able to beat it super easily, even changing the difficulties for it. So, that's one thing but everything else graphics fighting you know the storyline everything else it was just an amazing game this literally is now my favorite spider-man game and like i said one of my top it's in my top five for my favorite sony playstation games uh for the playstation 4 so to be able to bring us something like that it's it's just amazing and i look forward to the dlc that's coming out um, they already announced like three small ones, so wait and see how those go. I'm hoping we get something next year at E3 announcing, hey, a bigger DLC expansion coming out, or at least Spider-Man 2 is in the development made by Insomniac. So, Insomniac, thank you guys so much for making this amazing game. Keep on doing what you guys are doing. I look forward to the next DLC. I look forward to the next one. So, I just want to say thank you guys. Also, thank you, uh, my viewers who watch my show. I really do appreciate it, you guys. Every view, every comment, every like, it really means a lot to me. So if you guys can, please just drop a like, drop a comment. Let me know how I'm, uh, what you think, what I can review next, or what should I be on the lookout for. 
you know your your opinions matter and I really like to get in depth and see you know what I can get more into my video game videos um, so yeah that is gonna be my video today for Marvel spider-man made by insomniac thank you guys for watching like I said be sure to drop that like drop a message if you have any suggestions or if you have any videos that you want me to video games that you want me to review or any topics you guys want me to talk about and be sure to check out my other videos if you guys are new to the channel and also be on the lookout for game hunters the newest episode should be coming out in the next week or so you guys and that's going to be based on portland retro so everyone have a great day thank you so much and i'll see you guys again later